pipes. Hope all is well. Today is Tuesday, November 2nd, so make sure you get out there and vote. This service call, customers got what the service call is dispatched as furnace not coming on. And most of the times when I go for a furnace, it's not a furnace, it's a boiler. But nonetheless, Pipe Doctor, we do them all. Full service plumbing and HVAC contract out here, Long Island, New York. We service Long Island, no, not Long Island, but Nassau County, and uh, some parts of Queens, New York City. All right? And yes, I am rocking Michael Bolton, and go ahead and laugh all you want. All right, because I can rock whatever I want because I'm Mikey Pipes. All right, let's get going. I tried to, one of these sockets broke off. Okay. So the igniter, the pilot shut off. When I tried to reignite it and I moved this around, then I heard a hissing and it started to get like a oh, yeah? gas smell here. So I said, all right, at this point in time, millivolt, we just kill it. Millivolt gas valve, huh? Yeah, so, so that's it. That's, that's what I draw the line. Okay. Well, you should have better pitch on the water heater. Be pitched up, yeah. Not okay. pitch, not pitch back. <laughs> All right, I should probably get some tools from the truck. I guess your auto feeder is broken too. Huh? Let you do what you do. All right, I'm not a magician, just keep that in mind. I understand. Let me get some tools and see if, see if confirm it's the gas valve, and then get you a new gas valve. That's what you need. All right, be right back. There. All right, let's take a look at this hydrotherm HC145 millivolt gas boiler, which is dated pre-1962. And I know that because there's your dates. See that? Ted Galvin did a PM in 1962, October 15th. Maybe it's 1963 or an 8, doesn't really matter. 71, maybe it's 68. 71, 73, 77, 78, 78, 79. And then you had to jump to 87, 88, 92, 97. So take a look at this gas burner assembly. You know what? I admit, I admit it when I never see anything before, but look at that. We have a, another tube. We have the main pilot tubing, right? And then you have this little one, like a relief on it, which connects to the bottom of this ancient Honeywell. So this connection right there accepted that, which then went to that. And there's the model number. So it's a, it's a millivolt system, so it has a, a pilot generator, which is that thing right there to the left of the, where the flame comes out, right? And when it's sitting in the tip of the flame, it's sending roughly 750 millivolts to this gas valve, right? And what's great about this is if it's on a steam boiler, if the power's out, you'll still have hot, uh, you'll still have heat because it's self-sufficient. Here, though, if you take a look at the diagram, right, it actually goes to a terminal block on the back of the boiler. That's 750 millivolts. Now, let me show you some of the controls on this ancient beast. And more than likely we're replacing it, but this is the Hydrotherm Model RTS-20B Relay Transformer. Look at that thing. 
That is a beast. We have TT on top and X1, X2 on the top right. That's the burner circuit. And there's a wiring block right there. And you would think X, I mean, um, the burner circuit, especially with this one, you would think that it gives 24 volts to that block, but it doesn't. It actually doesn't. It actually closes the circuit. And if you see, it says I have a 24 volt pilot duty. So, old. He said it's been, oh, look at that. We actually have a hole right there. Someone actually did a combustion test on this thing at one point of its life. Wow. I had, I did not expect to see that. Now, a traditional 750 millivolt gas valve here, I'm very doubtful will work. I'd have to change, I definitely gotta change it to pilot tubing. My only concern is this supplemental eighth inch line, which sits right there. I'm very hesitant to make major modifications to this boiler that's 50 years old. No, more. Uh, yeah, maybe 50. 55 years old. The best value here is to replace this boiler in its entirety. And again, cast iron boiler. Years of trouble-free reliability. Give them a Well McLean CGA 4 or maybe even a 5. New circulators on the supply. Get rid of the zone valves. Wire a three-zone switching relay. And get it nice and clean. Take a look at this. So they, when they piped in the pressure reducing valve, they actually broke off the thing, the handle, because the pipe was in the way. <laughs> wow. All right, just leaving this job. Gave them options to make a replacement, you know, replace the whole boiler, or Turn right. make repairs. And he wants me to make repairs. So we're going to be back here tomorrow afternoon. I am going to get a millivolt gas valve right. and see and if it works. Because if it works, then I saved him a bundle by switching his car insurance to Geico. <laughs> All right. I will probably make this part of tomorrow's video. So, yeah, I think that's better. Let me save this for tomorrow. And that way, now you can see the repair. All right. Hope you enjoy. Stay tuned. Okay. I'm back. Today is now Wednesday, November 3rd. And I am just feeling so excited this morning. Since there was a red wave. A red wave yesterday over Long Island. And the, the reds overcame the blues. And we're going to take back take back Long Island. So, so happy. All right, I did some research last night on that gas valve, and I'm picking up a replacement valve that apparently Johnstone, Johnstone says they have in stock, and we're gonna throw that in, and hopefully it works. All right, let's go see what happens. All right. One of the first things I'm gonna do is just document where these wires went. You know this one went there. And then our power pilot went to these two terminals. Let me just take a little picture of that real quick. Let me show you what I'm working with. There that is. These two terminals accepted the pilot generator. One wire is going to the boiler. The other wire is going to the boiler. So there we go. Get the gas off. Let's crack this union. Let's see. Good. Cooperative. Perfect. And we're checking the gas, making sure that we're good. We are good there.
Just gotta take the, the wires off the gas valve and then take off the gas valve off the gas drum. Take a look at this bad boy. Whew. Half inch in, three quarter out. All right, I have the gas, sorry, the pilot assembly right there. I got new pilot tubing and I have a new pilot generator. And as you can see, the burners are clean. I'm trying to get a bad angle there, but I'll vacuum out the base when I'm done. There's the valve. Got to hook up everything and see what I right. Let's just check our difference of spacing here. And as you can see, I need to make that a little bit longer. So for starters, I'm going to take this nipple out. And I'm also going to replace the union. I don't like this union. It's old. Time for it to go. So let me stick that into the pipe vise. And let's take off the one side of the union. I love the pipe vise. That's how easy that is. Comes right off. Beautiful. Okay, where's my wire brush? Should be. Yeah, it looks pretty good though. So let's throw some dope on there. Let's take off that. Let's pop on the new union. Take this off of right now. And we're gonna stick that into the pipe vise and tighten it up. See? Very easy. Easy peasy. Okay. Now that's in there. Let's throw some dope on this three quarter by half inch bushing that comes with the gas valve. And then we're gonna stick that right in the valve right there. Make sure I make sure I feed you guys. Now you're hungry. to go from that elbow to right there. And that's six inch. Ooh. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Union's in place. That's good there. We're gonna leak test after we do everything else down here. All right, just making the final cut on the new pilot tubing, a little razor bender. And now I may have to do another cut. But now I'm gonna carefully bend the tubing so it lines up with the compression nut for the pilot nut right there. See that? And you're probably asking me, Mikey Pipes, why aren't you using your bender? Well, my bender is in the brazing rig 
uh, tote carrier, which is in the shop. It's in the shop because we don't really need it in the winter. <laughs> so it looks like I have to make one more cut there. Just gonna use my finger and then cut right there. Sorry, there you go, cut right there. All right, getting it done. So we have a new pilot tubing from the new gas valve to the pilot assembly. And we also have a new power pile, the pilot generator, which the end is right, where is it? Yeah, the end is right here. And once we get this connected, we're gonna do the milli voltage wiring. And as I said earlier, I was I did some research last night and this should technically work. So let's slide that in there. Come on, and we wanna go all the way up in there. Does it let me? There we go, a little bit more. Now it's in there. Okay. Now my normal wrench that I use is in my service bag. I brought in my install bag today to this job instead. So I'm using a Nipix adjust uh, channel lock-ish wrench. See, Nipix, it has this little stupid button there, but it is what it is. All right, so pilot tubing is in. If you push that in there like that, the gas comes out of the pilot burner. All right, now we're gonna light the pilot for the first time. No, actually it's premature. I gotta, I gotta hook up the power pile wire. Right. So now that the wiring is on PP on both terminals, now we're gonna light the pilot. So I got a little Zippo here. There we go. Now it's lit. We're gonna hold that down for a good solid minute uh, because that power pile, that millivolt thermo pile, needs to ge generate roughly, I'd say 650 millivolts to hold down the magnet which I'm manually pushing in right now. It's the magnet, the solenoid inside this millivolt valve. We're holding that in. And once we have enough charge and I let this go, she's gonna stay lit. Okay. So it has stayed on. We have a nice flame there. And now we're gonna do the wiring for the rest of the gas valve. Wiring in this high limit aquastat and of course, signal from the system to turn on main burner. All right, since I'm going blind, I couldn't read that diagram, but I took a picture of it. So we have our thermostat, and that's gonna be coming from this wire, which goes to that terminal block in the back of the boiler. So we have one is going to TH, so I put one right there, see? The other wire is gonna to go to the high limit control, which is this aquastat high limit. And the other wire from the high limit goes to PP. So I'm just gonna join these together. I'll use a Wago right now and connect this and fire up the system and see what happens. All right, no Wagos. So I'm gonna turn this to on. Okay. Next, let's turn on power. And we have ignition. We have ignition. Look at that. We had a lot of roll out though there at first. We're gonna have to make some adjustments, check the pressure on the gas valve and make sure everything is proper. All right, we're slowly heating up. Keep in mind that it's relatively cool outside. I think it's about 50 degrees, maybe 45. I woke up this morning, it was 43 outside, but we're heating up slowly. 
stack temperature, I'm, I'm going to anticipate it's going to end up somewhere in the uh, high threes, possibly even low fours. As you can see, I have 10.4% of O2 and only 14 particles per million of CO, giving her a gross efficiency of 81.3%. Now, the system is up and running right now, but we're far from done. We have to make sure that the boiler turns off at high limit without touching that and make sure that the zones, when they're all satisfied by lowering the thermostat, that the boiler turns off. And then we'll be done. As long as that maintains, even my CO is dropping down. Very nice, very nice. All right, we're slowly climbing this old hydrotherm. HC 145. Those numbers still look good. Stack temperature slowly climbing. As predicted, high 300s, low 400s. O2, I'd like to see that's a little bit lower. And my particles per million of CO. Wow, it's perfect. Not bad for a. Uh, <laughs> A wildebeest from 1968. Damn. Damn. All right, after checking my gas pressure, I was a little under three inches of water column out of the gas valve, and hence the reason why my O2 was a little, little too high, over 10%. So I made an adjustment to the gas valve. Now, I'm not, I don't show certain things here because Again, there's too many, there's more lawyers than there are plumbers out there, but you know, it's, again, this is an educational how-to channel, and there are certain things that I'm just not gonna show to you guys. You know, and that's called, you know, that's adjusting the gas. I can show you doing the gas pressure if you like, but it was a little under three inches of water column. It's a 3.5 inch water column valve. I raised it up a little bit just by doing hair, hair adjustments, like an eighth of a turn along the way, and you notice I brought my O2 down to 9%. However, my CO went up from four to 34. Again, well under 50, which I like to see. I consider that anything under 50 industry standard. So again, for this 50 plus year old wildebeest, you know, still brought it back to life. You can't complain. All right, put a valve tag on the gas cock, boiler feed valve, Took the liberty of also identifying the water heater feed valve, water heater gas cock. I got my combustion test results right there. And the only thing left to do is to test for leaks with the one and only Big Blue. You know, this shows leaks. The system piping is leaking or a component is leaking, it's gonna bubble up, all right? No bubbles. If we had a leak, we have bubbles. All right, we're almost at 180 degrees. As soon as that happens, we know that the high temperature aquastat works. And if it doesn't, then, well, <laughs> it is what it is. All right, while I'm replacing the thermostat, as you can see, our ignition has stopped. So let's raise up the aquastat and we have main ignition let's lower that back down and I've proven that the aquastat relay I'm um, aquastat really the aquastat high temperature aquastat limit is functional all right I'm right now replacing the thermostat on the first floor and I have resistance there so I know that the thermostat is off which it is and I'm gonna turn that on, thermostat, and make sure my resistance goes away, meaning the valve opened to supply heat to that zone. All right, my burners are off. My zone valve 
has no resistance because the thermostat is on. Perfect. And it is 10.15 in the morning. It took about an hour and 45 minutes to replace that valve, do a combustion test, adjust gas valve, adjust, making sure the high temperature limit works and making sure all the zones are circulating. Easy peasy. All right, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it educational and hopefully a little bit uh, entertaining. You know, it would be uh, more entertaining if I had like Daniel Mini Me with me, but um, it is what it is. I am looking for a helper though, and we'll see what comes along. You know, just to make the day more enjoyable. I miss Godzilla. I do. I really miss Godzilla. Kelvin, eh? Not so much. Not so much. I think Cuomo really brainwashed him. I think he took too many experimental drugs in the National Guard that they gave him. But anyway, Mikey Pipes is looking for a helper slash apprentice. I don't really need a helper, but it's nice to have one around, you know, a schlepper. And, uh, you know, you can also learn, you know, and the more you know, the more you get paid. Facts. All right. Let me get your thoughts and feedback on this video. Should I have really pushed replacement? I know easy heating is going to say, no, just clean it, brother. What are you doing? Clean it and I'll get a new gas valve in there. Well, she was pretty clean. Being that she's 55 years old, that wildebeest. So let me get your thoughts. Would you have replaced that wildebeest and not offered any repair option? Or would you have done what I did and put a new gas valve in there Make sure she's running safe and heating properly. And uh, again, the replacement will come. I can guarantee you that. The replacement will come. There's no question in my mind. All right, if you guys want any stickers, versions one, two, and three are all available. Details in the description box down below. All right, be well, stay safe, God bless.